Hello, welcome to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Norman Gale. He is the Regional Director of the Community Services for the Salvation Army. Welcome back, because you've been here Thank before, <laughs> um, to Spirit of Life. And we'd love to hear more about your work with the Salvation Army and your faith journey. <laughs> so. Going back to your faith journey, is there, what do you think is that spiritual journey of people in the Salvation Army? Because every, I suppose, faith has have their own focus in Christianity. Hmm, that's a very big question. <laughs> um, I, I, I think, speaking personally, um, it's, it's one of those things that um, if you grow up through a church and the Salvation Army is not much different from most churches, uh, come through a, a Sunday school program and learn a lot mm. of Bible stories and things like that. Um, I think one of the, the things you get to at some point stage in your life, and I certainly have mm. got to that point, uh, is that you have to put some of that into practice and really understand what does that mean for me? Mm. Not, not just uh, what does it mean in theory, what are the right things to say, what should I be doing if I want to be a good person, but what does it mean to me? And I, and I think Discovering that almost almost from first principles uh, is a very very important thing, and I think I've gone through a number of uh, iterations and and uh, developments in, from that point of view, and and so for a lot of people, and certainly in, in my case, uh, you know what's happening in the outside world is very important, and so growing up in the 60s and the early 70s and the, the age of revolution and flower power and all the rest of it, uh, anti-war and things like that, has an impact. And uh, at those, in those days, there were certainly a lot of Christian thinkers, particularly the South American revolutionaries, and um, those sorts of thoughts and ideas certainly had an impact on me. Uh, I also got involved with the Pax Christi organization, which is, mm. uh, has uh, some Catholic uh, connections. And um, it's anti-war, of course, anti-nuclear. Mm. Um, so a lot of those things, uh, also in the environment of, of developing one's thoughts about faith. Um, but fundamentally, it comes back to personal relationships and how you get on with other people and how you regard other people. So. Um, learning from the teachings of Jesus and the love of Jesus and how he uh, taught us to, to love others uh, in the way that he loved us um, is, is sort of how do you put that into practice is, is the issue. And I found, found that in, in different aspects of my life that I've uh, really been exploring that. And uh, in this last few years when I've been working in community services, it's been a really um, a grassroots type experience of putting a lot of that faith uh, into practice on a daily basis. It's mm, wonderful. And uh, with the spirituality, do you um, find that there is um, you can work with other Christian faiths in you know in your work with the poor? Sure. I, 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 there's no uh, difficulty uh, in working with people from a whole range of different backgrounds. Uh, you know, I, I, I love the book uh, about. Um, uh, joy, which was the Desmond Tutu and the Dalai Lama, mm -hmm. talk about what joy means in their lives, and and those sorts of um, you know uh, experiences are, are really good to draw from. In terms of how we work at a, at, at the lo local level, uh, we certainly have uh, joint programs with other churches uh, and with other organisations as well. So, for example, we work with the Second Bite organisation to recover food from uh, markets. Um, and we work with the, the local Anglican church to do their Project Hope, which again recovers food from the local community oh. so that we can give that food back to, to people in need. Um, and there's a range of other things that we do with other organisations, uh, with other churches. Uh, we work with the uh, Baptist church in, in Ashburton, Ash, Ashwood area. Uh, and, and a lot of other places, Q Uniting Church as well. Mm. So, yeah, we, we're very happy to work with anyone who, who has a heart for people mm. and really uh, is keen to support people on the ground. 
And how do you inspire people to work? Because I know that the Salvation Army have a very big um, bank of workers. Well, we have a lot of volunteers. Not all of them are Salvation Army people, if you like mm. to put it that way. Um, but that's the good thing about it, in a way, because people call us up. I have emails and phone calls. How can I help? I'd like to uh, mm. work at a food bank or something like that. Mm. So I have a lot of people coming to us. We have quite a lot of volunteers who assist with our Sunday lunch program, mm. uh, with our thrift shop, thrift shop that we run, and uh, with a number of our other programs, our homework group. And, and I find, actually, they're the ones that inspire me. But uh, overall, uh, we, we work together very well and, and feeling that together we can, we can do something for the community. Uh, mm. So, yeah, it's, it's, I guess it's a bit of inspiration all around in a way. Mm. But uh, certainly we, we would have, you know, around 100 volunteers coming through, helping us uh, from time to time, some more intensively than others. But uh, definitely there's a good spirit in the community mm. for, and, for volunteering. And where do you get your funding with, the, with your community church work that you do in, yeah. um, at uh, Bowen Street? Yeah, uh, funding is always a problem, but... Um, we get funding from a range of different sources. Some some of the work that we do is funded directly by the federal government. Uh, not a huge amount of it, but some of it. Uh, some of it's funded by our congregation, so the giving in, in our mm. Sunday offerings. Uh, some of it's funded by the City of Burundara Council, They're very mm. generous with uh, various grants that mm. they provide for community activities. Uh, some of it from other benefactors. Mm. So it's, it's, a, it's a range of different sources. Yeah, so that's great that you, you're able to, you know, provide for, for so many things from homelessness to food to, um, to children and refugees. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And yeah. So now conversational classes, or you've been doing that for a while? So the, the migrant uh, outreach program that we operate and the activities that we, uh, we have really started 10 years ago. Oh. We got some seed funding from the federal government immigration department at the time. Mm -hmm. We employed a, a worker. And yeah. uh, so the, the work has grown from there. Oh, fantastic. We're going to go for a break now. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us and we'll be back after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to The Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Norman Gale. He's the Regional Director of the Community Services for the Salvation Army. Welcome back, Norman. Thank you. You were talking about um, your community services work um, and how you've been doing work with the migrants and also the refugees. Could you tell me more about that work? Yes, um, indeed. We... Um a lot of our program are built around the, the needs of people we see coming to us. And uh, quite a few years ago, we found a lot more people from different backgrounds, migrants, refugees, people from other, other countries, of course, um, coming to us. And we thought, what, what is needed? So we set up a pilot program uh, and we employed a, an outreach worker. And so one of the good things that she managed to do was to set up a program of buddy families. So we buddied up uh, new migrants with local families and had them connecting That's together. Uh, gave, gave a bit of training and, and some uh, cultural appreciation and that sort of thing. Uh, but then we also ran a number of uh, education programs, social activities and that sort of thing as part of that program. Now, of course, funding was only for a pilot program. So after a while, we decided in, in order to uh, do the most effective thing that could be done, uh, which would be make the best, uh, you know, end, end um, uh, benefit uh, was to actually run some sort of course around communication because we found most people just needed 
to improve their communication skills, which was not just the same as learning English, mm. but actually to be understood and to understand. Oh. And uh, so we, we hired a uh, speech therapist, mm -hmm. and she's been running now for the last 10 years a pronunciation class oh. to help people pronounce <laughs> well, in other words, to communicate better. And so the idea was then if communication skills could be improved, people would have a better chance at mm. uh, presenting at an interview or negotiating with their neighbour or with a shopkeeper oh, or whatever yeah. it might be so they'd get on better in, in oh, the community. Wow. That was the point. And so we've been doing that for a long time. At the same time, one of the Rotary Clubs, Canterbury Rotary, uh, partnered with us and they bring along some of their uh, members and they uh, help with some practice interviews mm. and help people with their resumes. So we're looking at assisting people to get into the job market in their chosen profession. Because what we found was a lot of migrants come here, they end up doing menial jobs, but they might be very well qualified. Uh, but finding something in their own field is difficult. And often it's around the communication mm. skills that they have and uh, their understanding of the job search process. Mm. So we've sort of focused on those things, which are not the only thing, of course, uh, but it's, it's something that makes the best uh, mm. uh, end result. And a lot, we've had some good success with that program, mm. as well as running, of course, social activities and, and providing that sense of community, which people often lack when they first arrive. Yes. Uh, mm. So we always celebrate the Harmony Day every year in, in That's March. Great. We've just had been through that. And uh, we also provide welcome dinners and we also provide some social activities for people to get to know each other a little bit. Yes, that's amazing the amount of things you'll do. I don't know how you'll fit it in. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also the generosity, because I hear a lot of the money comes from the local church. Yes, that's to right. fund things. Yes, so people are very generous. Yes, yeah, so, and that was because the founder of your uh, church was um, William Booth, is that correct? correct? So could you tell me more about how he founded the Salvation Army? So William Booth, this is going back 150 years or something, wow. something like that. Um, you know, noticed in, in the east end of London mm -hmm. that a lot of people were not attending the church and, and often they, their experience, mm. their lived experience was that the local churches were rejecting them because uh -huh. they were you poor. Know, unemployed, yeah. okay. poor, uh, that sort of thing. So he set up, set up a tent mission, mm. which wasn't intended to be a church, just, uh -huh. just a tent mission. And his plan was that he'd uh, you know, have them hear the message of Jesus and then be referred back to the local church, wherever they came from. Oh. Uh, but that sort of didn't work too well. And a lot of people said, we just want to worship here. You know, in, in, the, in tent. the tent. That's ah, it. In the city. So eventually that evolved into uh, almost a branch of the Christian church. Um, but the ethos was very much working with people in need, uh, working with people, you know, who uh, were sort of on the edges of society in, in a way. Uh, many of them, you know, had just fallen on hard times. They weren't necessarily, you know, uh, chronically poor, but... He did a lot of work in, in looking at the, um, uh, the, syst the systemic uh, mm. issues around poverty in, in those days. Mm. So that's been with the Salvation Army for uh, all of its life. And even today now, as we're evolving into the future, we're focusing on issues around homelessness, drug and alcohol issues, and related sort of uh, areas of need that we see uh, still he here with us in society. Mm. And so the Salvation Army needs to be working in those areas as well as in other uh, more general parts of society. Mm. Yeah, it's fantastic what, uh, what you're doing. And I, I come from a welfare background and it's, um, I think it's great how you all not only um, look at things as in the Band-Aid, but look at some of the systemic things that why people are disadvantaged or poor. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And it's one of the reasons why we feel very important that, that we get into the uh, financial counselling out mm. area because our financial counsellor here in uh, Burundara uh, really makes a big difference to mm. people because of the way she advocates and is able to get 
debts actually forgiven, not just find oh, a payment wow. plan to try and pay off the debt over a period of time, but where inappropriate lending has happened or when something is, shouldn't have happened in the first place, she's managed to get debts forgiven. Wow. And that makes a big difference I didn't know that there people. was that aspect. Huh? It makes a big difference to oh, people. Oh, I'll have to go to her. I've yes. got a few debts <laughs> that I need I, to. If I'm ever in trouble, I'll go to her. <laughs> <laughs> but right. um, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's an aspect, really, of this breaking of the chains that I mm. talked about at one stage, uh, where I feel financial difficulties, mm. you know, mm. they need more than just a budget or yeah. a payment, payment plan. On that note, we'll go for a break. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us and we'll be back after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Norman Gale. He's the Regional Director of Community Services for the Salvation Army. Welcome back, Norman. Thank you. I was very interested to hear about the Salvation Army, why it is an army. Um, is it because they're battling human beings, or is it the devil, or who are they battling? Well, it's a great source of... Um, um, conjecture, I suppose, or, or a mis miscommunication sometimes, depending on people's backgrounds, because uh, in some cultures, an army has got a very specific meaning. But um, the Salvation Army was formed at a time when, in England in particular, there's a lot of jingoism around. People like to, you know, talk about fighting for God and country and uh, liked wearing uniforms and things like that. And so the idea actually, you know, had a, a, a strange beginning in a sense. It was just accidentally came up, uh, along where there were some very passionate people. William Booth was a very passionate person. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say he was the one who said, let's, let's have a Salvation Army. That wasn't really <laughs> his point. But uh, there were people around who were young, enthusiastic, and really wanted to get out there and, and change the world, you know. So that was the passion. Mm. Um, and, and so it so happened that because of the culture of the time, uh, people started thinking of this organisational, that movement. What will we call this movement? And uh, they had actually some quite meetings of the senior people. Mm -hmm. Senior people were sort of like in their 20s and 30s. They weren't <laughs> old people in those days um, who uh, said, oh, we've got to get some name for this organisation. And one of the names that was put up was that we should be a volunteer army because we're, we're out fighting, uh, we're fighting the devil, we're fighting uh, poverty, we're fighting where things are going wrong in the world. Uh, we're sort of, uh, you know, organised. So mm. we're an organised group, like an army, you know, mm. and we're, go we're going to uh, concerted, make a concerted effort to change the world. This was mm. the sort of thinking that was going on at the time. And uh, at one of those meetings, uh, they had this idea of we're a volunteer army because we're just all volunteers and we're serving Jesus and we're going to change the world. And um, William Booth didn't like that idea. He said, no, we're not really volunteers. We're, we're really here to sell, save people. We're, we're the Salvation Army. To save so their he, souls. He crossed out. Oh, well, it's more than that. He wasn't just about saving souls. He was about changing people's mm. physical situation and their, mm. their economical situation. So mm. it was more than just saving souls. Mm. So he crossed out the word volunteer and said, we're a Salvation <laughs> Army. Uh -huh. And it, it came from there. So oh. then a few bright sparks decided, well, uh, if we're a Salvation Army, we should have a rank or something. We should be a captain or something <laughs> like that. And in the days, uh, the the uh, principal person in a church, like the Methodist Church, which, which the Salvation Army evolved from, uh, they had a general superintendent, you know, that was the main oh. uh, role. Uh, the, the most senior person, I guess, was the general superintendent. And so they said, well, you could be the general superintendent, but we don't need the superintendent rule. You could be the general, you know, <laughs> because you're the general of the Salvation Army. You're the top dog, you know, oh, okay. so to speak. So there were sort of ideas thrown around uh -huh. like that, and it evolved. And then um, 
uh, certain people uh, at, at outlying places would, you know, say, oh, okay, I'm going to be the ta captain of the troops and we'll <laughs> march, you know, into the devil's haunts oh. and, uh, you know, spread the, the word of Jesus. So do you so all have marching practices? We did marching, a lot of marching. You did do, actually <laughs> well, have a marching? you know, that's where the Salvation Army bands sort of oh, had a role to okay. play because then they started to be the leading part of the march oh. would be this brass band, oh. which, of course, every military's got a brass band. And uh, at the time, brass bands were pretty popular as well. So in a way, there's a little bit of a capturing of the microcosm of the oh, social wow. set setting of, of the time uh, mm. 150 years ago. Now, yes. it's evolved a bit since then, but uh, there's still something of that life still in oh, it, uh, wow. which is there. No, it's very, very engaging, and, and maybe uh, this whole band thing could be revived. And <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, bands have changed, and now we have guitar bands and yes. uh, rock bands and things like that. So we use them in the Salvation Army too. Yes. Um, well, you but could uh, bring the, brass the bands horn, are still around. horns into it, the brass yeah, into all yeah, the music. Exactly. I mean, one of my favorites is um, um, "I'm Not a Slave to Fear." Or slave yeah. to sin, yeah. which is yeah. um, well. One of the things that William Booth used to say was, "Why has the devil got all the best tunes?" Ah. So he'd adopt the tunes in the days before copyright existed, ah. and he'd write uh, Christian music uh, words to the secular oh. tunes. And uh, a lot of the tunes in our tune book, so to speak, are, are from the secular oh, world, right. if you like to put it that way. Oh, that's um, cheeky. And uh, so he he didn't have any store by saying oh we've got to do it this way do it whatever way attracts people he said i'll stand on my head if it attracts wow. people wow he was a good do marketing anything. that's where you he got was, the marketing he gift was from. actually a pretty good marketer and a creative person a very, very person creative. of drama and very flexible and he he would go with the times nice. so we, he wouldn't get he he wouldn't really be saying we should stick with brass bands but whatever works that's yes. what he'd be saying Oh, it sounds like something I can connect with. Maybe I'll have a visit of your church. <laughs> <laughs> You're very welcome. Oh, that's good. And, um, yeah, so if someone was to come to your church, what would they expect from, because, you know, well, you know someone who's listening may want to visit one of your they're Salvation Army. very welcome Army. to go to any Salvation Army around the city. Um, they'll, be, they'll vary a lot. Some, some are quite small, and they more or less like small house church type of setups. And they might just have a small Bible study and things like that. Others are bigger and they might have their brass bands and they might have their choirs, or we call Songs to Brigade, and they might have a you know, more formal service, but it's, 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 it's lively. Lots of, uh, you know, almost entertainment in some ways, but entertainment where we're praising God and, uh, and showing the joy of the Spirit. Yes, and always uh, wanting to help because that's very much the ethos of, it's definitely part of uh, the ethos. acceptance and love of Jesus. Absolutely. Oh, that's, that's wonderful and it's a great note to end with, but um, I wish you um, all the best for your journey and your serving God. Thank you very much and thank you for having me. You're welcome. God bless you. Thank you. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Tune in next week. Goodbye and God bless you. Oh.